Good morning. It's Saturday, February 27th, and this is the Wenatchee World's newest podcast, Slices of Wenatchee. We're excited to bring you a closer look at one of our top stories and other announcements every Tuesday, Thursday, and Saturday. Today, Eastmont and Wenatchee High students have been back in school since January, and some of the more creative methods of social distancing are getting international attention. Today's episode is brought to you by Equilus Group Incorporated. Equilus Group Incorporated is a registered investment advisory firm in the states of Washington, Oregon, and Idaho. Equilus Group Incorporated, building your financial success. Learn more at equilusfinancial.com, member SIPC and FINRA. Now our feature story. Schools everywhere are adapting the way they teach to keep their students safe during the pandemic. And here in the U.S., one school in Washington state has gone to extreme measures to maintain social distancing, giving every single member of their marching band their very own personal tent in which to rehearse. You might call it tentertainment. Eastmont and Wenatchee High students have been back in school since January, each on a different hybrid schedule. Wenatchee is on the AM-PM schedule, while Eastmont is on the AB schedule. And some of the more creative methods of social distancing are getting international attention, as you just heard in coverage from BBC World News. By now, we've all seen the photo of band practice at Wenatchee High School. But whose idea was it? Wenatchee principal Eric Anderson has some answers. Well, the idea actually came from our music and theater teachers. Um, As we knew we were bringing students back in a hybrid format, Um, There's obviously a concern around singing uh, with a mask off, and we wanted to make sure that our students had both the ability to sing and play an instrument uh, in groups so that they could practice together. And it was was extremely important for us to to figure out a way to to make that happen. And so uh, their creative approach is kind of where we landed on this. And then in collaboration with our local health district, uh, we were able to to pull this together and and get approval. And uh, here we are today. As Anderson mentioned, in collaboration with the local health district, the high school has taken extra care to make sure that students are safe. Wenatchee World Education reporter Ian Dunn spoke with Wenatchee principal Eric Anderson about the transition from remote learning to in-person and the preparation that went into it. We did a lot of pre-planning. I mean, so we obviously we rolled into this slow. We were very methodical about this, tried to cover as many angles as we could. Uh, to really solve problems in advance, uh, and I think that really paid off for us because when it came down to it, we didn't have um, anything that was like, oh man, we did not see this coming. Yeah, yeah. There were a lot of things that we had talked about, and we made small adjustments here and there on some things, but nothing significant. So it's really been a, I mean, as as smooth as this could go, it really, I couldn't have asked really for a, a better rollout of kids coming back into that hybrid learning. Anderson also says that he feels Wenatchee students are far better off in school from a social-emotional standpoint. So tell me, what's it been like having kids back in the building? Oh, it's been fantastic. I mean, the bottom line is it is amazing the difference um, and just the level of energy uh, in the building. I mean, both between just the, you know, obviously having adults interacting with kids, but just even the conversation levels of adults to adults because... You know, you get kids back in the building, you get a lot of smiles, even with masks on, you can tell that uh, people are happy, you get uh, all sorts of comical experiences, and then you get uh, teachers um, and paras and everybody else seeing the growth of students in front of them, which uh, also just it gets people excited. Eastmont principal Lance Noel had a similar message, noting that the social-emotional impact of being back in school has had a massive impact on students. Noel also thinks he feels like the students have been pretty honest with him, saying that the stories he hears are dark, disturbing, even scary. In his opinion, we will be dealing with the social-emotional damage for years to come. In addition to the concerns about the social impacts of remote learning, there has been talk statewide and locally about the learning loss that has occurred. Eastmont Assistant Superintendent Matt Charlton said that right now they're just trying to get a handle on exactly how much there is. He added that they will have some summer school opportunities and credit retrieval type things, but some kids will need more time to get across the finish line, Charlton said. For now, Anderson says that he thinks kids are just enjoying being back in school, and the band is happy to finally play together as a group. They're taking advantage of what they have in front of them. And before we go, here is the Wenatchee High Band, coming to you from their own personal enclosures. They're going to play uh, the Wenatchee High School fight song, and this is the Wenatchee High School GA Band. Take it away. One, two, one, two.
Now our weekly profile of one of the world's 30 under 35 award recipients. Today we're highlighting 31-year-old Brooklyn Holton. Halton competed as a Western Washington University heptathlete while working on dual degrees in business management and kinesiology with a minor in manufacturing and supply chain management. She grew up in Arlington and began working with the city of Everett while finishing her degrees, which helped her decide her current career. After graduating, she moved into a full-time job in the city of Everett that included managing grants, supporting neighborhood revitalization programs, and organizing citywide events. She also embarked on a professional athletic career as an American women's professional football player for five seasons and Team USA bobsled breakwoman. Halton was instrumental in establishing the United Neighborhood Association of South Wenatchee, a community advocate group which has become an active voice in the needs of Latinos in that neighborhood. She also prioritizes supporting local nonprofits, and since 2015 has served many organizations and continues to contribute as a board member for a variety of community entities. So, what inspires Holton? She told us that she's fueled by a foundation that each person deserves to be valued as a positive contributor to their community, and only in an environment of equity and inclusion can that role be honored. Whether in work or volunteering, she is intentional about approaching opportunities through two lenses. The first is through a lens that examines relativity to increasing quality of life, and the second lens is through which diversity, equity, and inclusion are prioritized. Knowing that the plans and policies she develops, and the initiatives and connections that she makes can lead to a positive difference, inspires her to be successful. Now, some local history. Wenatchee Valley History is brought to you by Neighbor, your trusted neighborhood community. Neighbor is a free online forum you can trust to connect with your community, focus on facts, and make a difference. Join the conversation. Visit wenatcheeworld.com slash n-a-b-u-r. In Section 10 of the Yakima Treaty of 1855, the Wenatchee tribe was promised 36 square miles of reservation land near the Wenatchapam fishery site near the Icicle and Wenatchee rivers, which would have included present-day Leavenworth. White settlers had already occupied the land, and within two weeks of signing the treaty, Governor Stevens retracted his promise and allowed settlers and the Northern Pacific Railroad to build on the land. The Wenatchee tribe is still seeking resolution, according to Tribal Tribune, a Nespelum-based newspaper that covers the call Confederated Tribes. Thanks for listening. We'd also like to thank our sponsor again, Equilus Group Incorporated, a registered investment advisory firm in the states of Washington, Oregon, and Idaho. The Wenatchee world has been engaging, informing, and inspiring North Central Washington communities since 1905. We encourage you to subscribe today to keep your heart and mind connected to what matters most in North Central Washington. Thank you for starting your morning with us, and don't forget to tune in again on Tuesday.